Hello, my name is Nigel Semmons. Um, this afternoon I'm going to talk to you uh, on the yellow-legged Asian hornet and give you an update on the response from the National Bee Unit. I am the Contingency Planning and Science Officer for the National Bee Unit, which is part of the Animal and Plant Health Agency. Um, uh, this talk will mainly be a summary of how we do our response uh, and we'll also cover in, in detail how beekeepers can help us with that and members of the public as well and give you uh, an indication where you can get far more information on Asian Hornet. Uh, the yellow-legged Asian Hornet um, Vespa velatina um, is native to Asia um, and it came into France in 2004 and has spread into adjacent countries. Uh, it spread at a rate of about 80 kilometres per year um, and in South West France and countries such as Portugal, estimates now of greater than 10 nests per km squared. Um, it's quite an easily identifiable insect and I'll show you um, ID, where you can get ID guides from later on, but it's generally black uh, with yellow legs and with the fourth segment on the abdomen being a clear yellow band. Um, compared to the European hornet, uh, you know, the Asian hornet is very clearly dark black. Uh, rather than uh, a reddish colour uh, with a very waspy um, abdomen, as in the case of the European hornet. Um, there are some very good um, films, videos of Asian hornet um, available. And for example, Eric Darizé has some very good YouTube videos, but particularly one, The Great Killer of Honeybees, shows Asian hornets hawking in front of beehives. Um, we haven't ever seen this level of Asian hornet behaviour in the UK because we haven't got this density of nests um, and nowhere close to it um, and we'll discuss that as we go forward in this talk. Um, a key key thing to be aware um, uh, of Asian hornet, uh, DEFRA Communications do um, a rolling news page uh, on gov.uk uh, and all the sightings are put onto that um, when they're confirmed by ourselves um, and as soon as they're confirmed we then pass them on uh, to beekeeping associations and we'll talk about that process um, as we go forward but one of the other key functions of DEFRA communications is they they, they, they correct newspapers and here's one um, from earlier on this month uh, of deadly Asian hornets could invade Britain uh, as they hide in those Betting holiday makers bags. Uh, Asian hornets certainly can um, hide in, in luggage. We've had a couple of examples of that, um, but many of these uh, newspaper articles sort of go into the scaremongering a bit um, and also often aren't accurate and uh, our DEFRA communications deal with that uh, as best they can. Uh, and this particular one is showing a wrong photograph of um, a wrong hornet and this is a giant uh, Asian hornet here, Vespa mandarina, uh, which is not present in Europe at all. Um, lots of awareness is also done by the Non-Native Species Secretariat, uh, and they they deal with government bodies and non-government organisations, um, uh, including Natural England, Forestry Commission, Wildlife Trusts, uh, caravanning clubs, etc. Uh, and that has increased over the years. I'll also, you know, encourage um, uh, beekeepers, if they're close to any ports or, or the like, please, please, please contact people there. Um, we'll talk about the resources you can use for that as well. Um, the Non-Native Species Secretariat have local action groups who deal with other invasive avian species, um, uh, and they are also being made aware of Asian hornet. Um, the MBU has also done uh, a number of conferences with pest controllers, done a number of talks, um, and we've produced an awareness leaflet um, uh, so that pest controllers are, are aware that we're in the eradication phase and to report it as we will discuss in a moment. Um, there are also many amateur and professional um, entomologists out there uh, and the Bee, Wasp and Ant Recording Society um, uh, who are linked in with the reporting that we'll discuss in a moment ha have over 9,500 people who are interested in sex send photographs in all the time uh, uh, and uh, they are great um, eyes and ears out there looking for Asian hornets uh, in the general environment. 
Um, on B-Base, www.nationalbeeunit.com, uh, we have a range of Asian Hornet information. Uh, the first one on the front page, if you like, is when um, positive sightings occur. It goes up as a news items and they will go out as an alert on the RSS feed and that can be plugged into association websites. Um, we also have the Asian Hornet pages that contain ID guides and posters. Um, uh, we have just updated our how to make uh, monitoring traps fact sheet and we'll discuss this in a moment. Um, we have uh, any articles and papers are, are put up on this site as well. Uh, we have info on how to report sightings. We have some very, very good PowerPoint videos by Dr. Kirsty Stainton, previously of Ferrer, uh, on the biology and nest analysis. And I encourage you and your associations to look, to look at those talks to give you a better understanding of Asian hornets. Um, and we have this winter just put up historic information on sightings and nests, giving you more information on, on the individual details uh, of all the cases. Um, we also have a photo gallery uh, which contains uh, images of Asian hornet and nests. Uh, most of the photos I use are on that um, and there are many, many more there. And by all means, please access that and use that for talks. Um, We've just published an article in Beecraft, uh, authored by um, Margaret Gill and Rebecca Clarkson from the MBU and Steph Walk from the UK Centre of Ecology and Hydrology. Um, and, and they've done the, the common misidentified species with details of where they occur, when they're most likely to be seen uh, and what they look like. It, it does show that many species are mistaken for Asian hornet. Uh, some of them aren't that similar um, but of course the most most common ones four or five uh, if you like are on our, our fact sheet I've just previously mentioned but the most commonly misidentified is the European um, Hornet. Crab. Uh, to report sightings in the UK please use Asian Hornet Watch app it's available on the B-Base site um, uh, and in an iPhone and Android forms um, you can also use an online recording form uh, or you can use the alert email. Um, if I can encourage uh, everyone to try and use the apps if at all possible, uh, and there are two reasons for that. One, uh, they contain pictures of the, 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 the commonly mistaken insects. So in the field, you can compare whatever you've seen or your photograph on your phone uh, with, with this and then report it as a European Hornet if that's the case. Or you can send a photograph in uh, uh, and get get um, the scientists at UKCEH to help you with that identification. Um, uh, the other benefit of, of, of doing it is it's instantaneous in the field. It records your location um, uh, and it contains all the details we need. Many of the emails we get uh, are a bit short on information. Uh, just saying I've seen an Asian Hornet. I'm afraid we, we have too many reports to deal with that sort of thing. Uh, to give you an idea of numbers, the UK Centre of Ecology and Hydrology um, deal with last year nearly 10,000 leads. It's been steadily going up. Um, uh, we do have major peaks and the major peaks coincide to when a European Hornet is act active in the spring. Uh, and in the autumn, um, but often uh, we have seen uh, these coincide with when, article, uh, uh, when newspaper articles have gone out, we've got a peak in activity um, as well. So far this year, we've had just under 4,000 um, sightings reported, uh, but none have been confirmed as positive for Asian Hornet um, so far this year. Um, since 2016 and the first nest in Tetbury, uh, we've had a total of 21 confirmed responses across the UK. Um, there's been 10 nests from eight queens. Uh, so two of these were primary and secondary nests. Uh, but all these nests have been small. Um, we believe that to be uh, because of our temperatures. Uh, and also maybe these hornets have come in late uh, in the year, not had time to build a big nest. We're also detecting them in September before the nests get large. Uh, none had reached the stage of producing uh, virgin queens, the next generation of queens that overwinter. Um, uh, so that's a very important point. And last year we had uh, one nest in Gosport and we'll go into further details on that in this talk. We've also had 11 other independent events uh, and by that I mean hornets that have come in or been sighted 
um, uh, and not believed to be related to the nest. Uh, in many of these cases, they, they've been in the back of vehicles or in luggage, uh, and we've got a backstory with them, um, uh, and that's quite important um, uh, for us to investigate and establish that, but they've not in general been linked to nests. Um, the MBU is part of Animal and Plant Health Agency. Um, we cover England and Wales. Uh, there are inspectorates in Scotland and Northern Ireland as well. Uh, but the MBU has 60 bee inspectors. Um, we also have wildlife officers that do nest destructions and we have access to other um, staff amongst the APHA that help us in larger outbreaks. So far, um, with the efficiency that we're gaining from our experience with Asian Hornet, uh, we've been quite self-contained with this uh, and we've certainly been able to deal with the outbreak so far comfortably. Um, the UK nests so far have been in cypress trees, Escalonia hedge, brambles, elm tree, uh, London plane tree, spruce tree, oak tree in a log at ground level and last year in an apple tree. Um, uh, they range from ground level up to 20 metres high. Uh, the majority have been in, in trees, uh, but all these nests have been small as I described. Um, Dr. Eleanor Jones is going to talk to you about the DNA analysis in a subsequent talk. Uh, but the important points from that is um, all the individuals analysed so far have been from populations that have colonised in Europe uh, and not a new incursion from Asia. Um, and also from genetics of individuals from the nest, um, no queens found in the UK were offsprings from any of the previous nests. Um, in the UK. Whilst doing track and trace as well, um, all the individuals collected uh, within 2km or so of each nest site uh, during each individual outbreak have all been shown to be related to that nest uh, and not to be from another nest. If we ever detect any for, uh, that are not related to that nest, we will carry on our responses. But so far, we've had single nests with just um, hornets um, in the local environment. Um, most importantly, none of these nests have reached the stage of producing queens. Um, um, so at the moment, we have no evidence of an established population. We've also had no confirmed Asian hornet nests detected in the UK uh, in the winter, which would mean a nest had got to that stage of producing queens and uh, then died. Um, uh, and that would be a good sign that we're getting an established population. Uh, so far, that hasn't been seen. Um, so we're very much still in the eradication phase for this year. Uh, what do Asian hornet nests look like? Um, well, here's some good photographs. There are many more of these uh, from John de Carter Ray in Jersey, available on our B-Base gallery, as well as other photographs. Uh, but it does show that um, the Asian hornets can clearly be recognised on the nests. Uh, and that's a key point. If, if you see a primary nest, as in the two examples at the top here, uh, at the start of the year, just keep an eye on it, because normally you won't see the insect on it immediately. Uh, you know, keep a, uh, about three, of, three to five metres back from the nest. Uh, and then very shortly, within 10 minutes or so, if it's a live nest, you will see a wasp um, or a queen, queen Asian hornet return to it, um, uh, in which case quite easy to take, take, take a photograph from a distance and report that to us um, uh, and we will come and deal with it. Uh, the, the, the queens are at this stage, they're low mothers. Um, feeding the, the young. In this case, you can see an Asian hornet here around the PTO warming up uh, a few eggs in there. And then they start to work building the nest out before the grubs inside develop and the nest grow bigger. Um, don't think that they're all secondary nests uh, in the top of trees. Many uh, nests can be in, uh, hidden away in buildings if there's room for them to grow. Um, primary nests, more often than not, are in sheltered locations um, low down, or as in this case, in a bird box. Um, key points to be aware of is that uh, Asian hornets can occur anywhere in the UK. Um, they're unobtrusive in the environment at low density, so early in, in the spring to summer, um, uh, it can be very hard to spot. But as the nests grow, uh, uh, the activity builds up. Um, they also like urban or semi-urban environments, and that's because 
there's food sources available to them uh, as well as water and places to nest um, as I said nests have to build up in size and when they get to sort of about a thousand individuals normally around about the September to October point they do become visible in the environment um, and we'll discuss where we can see hornets um, foraging in a sec um, most uh, foraging activity occurs within a kilometre of the nest, um, uh, some up to just over 2 km away, but the great majority is close and you get increasing activity as you get close to the, the nest. Uh, and eventually you will see, if you see an Asian hornet nest close up within 100 metres or so, you can see hornets regularly flying to and from it um, once you've spotted it. Um, so they aren't too difficult when you get that close. It's spotting them at a the far distance, which gets harder. Um, hornets can be seen uh, collecting meat for the young. So that could be bees from beehives uh, or any bees, flies or wasps on ivy. Bear in mind it's September, October. So ivy is usually in flower at this point in time or any other flowering plant. Um, uh, and also uh, Asian hornets will collect carrion if there's any available to them. Um, they also feed on sweet substances and also feed on the insects that are on sweet substances. Uh, so especially fallen fruit and most of our nests, that's where the initial Asian hornets have been detected on various apples, pears, plums uh, and grapes, etc. Uh, Asian hornets could also be seen collecting wood and resin for nest building. Uh, and these could be for resin from wounds on trees uh, or broken branches and, and wood from posts uh, or the like. Um, using 2020 as an example uh, for the uh, outbreak timeline, we had 9,592 sightings. They're all triaged um, by UKCH and those with Asian Hornet photographs or, or, or close to other outbreaks or nests where we were concerned about them. Uh, but they didn't turn out to be Asian hornets uh, in the case, then our MBU triage team would send out inspectors or ask Asian hornet team members to go out and uh, help triage them. Uh, of all of these, we only had two confirmed sightings and they were both from the Gosport site. It's a key point to take home here um, from Asian Hornet Week is that we need more accurate reporting uh, and we need people to be aware of the confusion species um, to get that more accurate reporting um, to enable us to do a more efficient response as we go forward. Um, Timelines why most of our sightings seem to come in on a Friday night or at the weekend. Uh, in this case, it was on Sunday the 6th and Tuesday the 8th, one from a beekeeper, one from a member of the public, uh, very close to each other in Gosport. Uh, uh, the photos were triaged by UKCH and sent through to us as Asian Hornet uh, and the local inspectors very quickly started surveillance and investigating backstory. Investigating backstory is key, obviously, because if we're told, you know, the Asian Hornet had come out of luggage from someone who's just returned that day from France, then there's no need to us to, to start doing all the resource heavy track and trace. Um, we can end it at that point. Uh, but we take that backstory into consideration and, and do quite a thorough investigation of it. If hornets are seen foraging, then we very quickly go into the track and trace stage as described here. Um, uh, one of the key points is we get a sample confirmed in the MBU lab. We don't wait for that. Uh, the sample is sent in as soon as we can collect one uh, uh, and then we carry on with the track and trace. Um, so it doesn't slow us down in any way. But as soon as that's confirmed in the lab, usually a day later, um, uh, alert is put out on gov.uk and local associations uh, and Asian Hornet teams contacted and made aware uh, to start surveillance in the area by putting out traps, by looking on local forage. Um, Bee Health Advisory Forum is all, also informed and our track and trace continues. Um, uh, usually lasts sort of three to four days. Uh, in this case, the nest was found on the Thursday, 10th of September. Um, uh, uh, and the uh, hornet nest was killed by colleagues from the wildlife, wildlife officers uh, on the uh, 11th. Um, uh, usually in the evening when the hornets return to the nest um, and uh, using FICAM D, um, we have access to cherry pickers if the nests are tall up and to tree climbers uh, if we can't act, get vehicles close to um, uh, and the nests are uh, then removed the next day and taken up to the laboratory at Sand Hutton for analysis uh, and that analysis is going to be discussed by Dr. Ellen Jones in subsequent talks. Uh, we also do surveillance um, around the site. 
uh, once we've ha collected the nest from that and this will collect any hornets that were out if you like of the nest um, uh, in the, de the day or so after the nest destruction but also if we have a primary or nest a secondary nest in within a uh, 100 meters or so um, then we will start to see activity for a week or so of Asian hornets and we will then start track and trace on that and we usually detect in the two cases we've had um, that within about a week. Um, at Gosport the Asian hornet was seen on grapes um, and as you can see very clearly an Asian hornet uh, and very easy to take a photograph when they're foraging like this. Um, if they're not, they're not collecting within photographic range, uh, or, or, or like they were here. You could put out a bowl of Trapit um, available from AgriSense, um, uh, and that's a very good bait that we use. It doesn't. It could literally just be a tray uh, with a few rocks or leaves in it to stop the insects from drowning. Um, but the Asian hornets will very quickly come to that, usually the next day after they're put out as a bait station, uh, and we'll show you other versions of bait stations in a moment. Uh, by using those bait stations, we we can mark the hornets um, and we can uh, um, uh, let them fly and uh, record their lines of sight they travel from the bait stations um, and um, also their return times. And this gives us the ability to triangulate in on the nests. And this is an example of the, the track and trace from Gosport. Uh, to do this, we have to have licenses to release Asian hornets as it's an invasive alien species. Um, and we do that under the Invasive Alien Species Enforcement and Permitting Order 2019. Uh, and those licenses are managed by Natural England for England and Natural Resource Wales for Wales. Um, at Gosport, the nest was 6.1 meters high in an apple tree. Uh, it, it had not been seen, it was over a uh, row roadside over a path um, uh, and the nest was about 30 centimeters in diameter. Uh, as you can see, Asian hornets were clearly visible on the outside of it. Uh, these photographs are often misleading because you can't see the nests in these trees until you act one or two particular angles where there's a gap through, through the foliage. Uh, and this photograph here makes it look very easy to spot uh, from underneath. Uh, but uh, I am assured by my colleagues who were there that that wasn't the case. Um, uh, but we, we have a range of equipment, as I described earlier, available and our pest controllers were able to uh, kill this nest in the evening with FICAMD and then it was subsequently removed uh, quite simply. Um, we're always trying to improve our efficiency in the outbreaks, and especially during COVID. Um, you know, bee inspectors were key workers, uh, but we, we very much didn't want to put them at risk working in uh, offices together. Um, so we did a response in the field, uh, and that's helped us, you know, reduce the size of our responses. Um, uh, and using our phones for meetings and the like. Um, we now do the first week of response without having a forward operating base um, uh, as a management center, if you like. It's all done remotely through computers. Um, and and, uh, and we, this is how we're gonna continue going forward. Um, and hopefully we won't, we won't need to set up anything complicated until we're into the second or third week, especially if we start to see multiple nests in an area. Um, but therefore this reduced size of response has made us a lot more efficient. Uh, we've also got improved guidance uh, that we're going to issue this week uh, on simplifying the monitoring traps and wick bait stations. And wick bait stations are shown with this honey jar with a wick here, uh, are used in Jersey in a very simple way of attracting in wasps and hornets. Uh, and if you watch it for 15 minutes a day in your area with Asian hornets that are in the locality, you'll very quickly see, see them returning to it to feed. Uh, otherwise you can use traps as is here. What does need to be bitten borne in mind is we don't want to uh, catch too much bycatch, other insects by accident, uh, and these traps will, um, but they're all designed not, not to kill them, not to, they don't have liquid in them, they have liquid absorbed up into cloth, either in a tube or, or just with the cloth in the bottom, uh, and that way the insects uh, survive for 24 hours, so you can release them daily, uh, unless you see an Asian hornet in it, in which case you can drop the whole thing in, into your freezer and collect the sample and send a photograph in. Um, we've also developed an Asian hornet track and trace app 
that allows us to record sightings real time in the field from the inspectors. Um, and, and then that is immediately available to other colleagues in the field and to managers such as myself. Uh, and this allows easy finding of the traps, speeds up the reporting, means we don't have to have an office where they're, they're taking paper back to at the end of each day. Uh, all our sightings are, are, are immediately available. Uh, we can also use barcoding of the traps uh, and this allows for better sample traceability uh, and we can also instantly create maps um, and line of sight information to help with the um, inspections track and trace activities. What should beekeepers do? Well they should set up Asian Hornet teams. Uh, we have guidance on the Bee Base Asian Hornet pages. I mean uh, the key things is increasing awareness with the public um, uh, and obviously helping with identification when uh, samples uh, are given to them or people say they've seen an Asian hornet or, or if, if a uh, person reports to CEH and they get a letter back saying you didn't send enough but they are given uh, uh, how to find the local AHT and uh, they may contact you asking for help to identify the insect or even on trapping. Um, so uh, what I'd recommend you do is buy some of the Asian Hornets in acrylic. They really do help. You can download the ID guides and alert posters from our website. Uh, you can purchase insect nets, very small little ones, that are very suitable for uh, catching Asian Hornet. Um, uh, and, and the key point is help public with identification and reducing misreporting of confusion species. Um, and the key statement I make in I'm sure we'll raise a bit of a spell. It's not every big insect is an Asian hornet. Um, we must avoid that scaremongering. It's certainly not the case uh, in the UK. Uh, and obviously follow up any local leads uh, and help people reporting it correctly. Um, other thing beekeepers to do, especially when they receive alerts uh, of, of confirmed sightings in their area, is spend time looking for Asian hornets in their apiaries and adjacent forage. Uh, do not approach suspect nests, report it. Um, uh, if there's a suspect nest uh, close by, retreat from it. Uh, Asian hornets will be foraging on ivy or you can put a bait station out uh, 100 metres or so away and they will very soon be attracted to it and you can take photographs then. Uh, as I said earlier, use monitoring traps rather than killing traps. Uh, and if in an apiary, record on B base, please. Um, uh, and that helps us uh, get an idea of the monitoring occurring in different areas. Uh, obviously, if you get a suspect sighting, uh, especially with a photograph, please report it, uh, preferably on the app as described earlier. Um, the BBK website, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Asian Hornet pages. Uh, and that has a map on there, the Asian Hornet teams. And th this is the site that a link comes to uh, from any uh, alert responses from the UK Centre of Ecology and Hydrology uh, to non-confirmed sightings. Uh, uh, and they can then find their nearest um, uh, coordinator or verifier. Um, uh, and that covers England and Wales. Now, there are some gaps in the coverage. If that's the case, then please you know, contact your local association in your area uh, and try to encourage them to set up an Asian Hornet team. Uh, they are key to our response. They really do help with this increasing awareness. Um, uh, you can also help by putting up posters, as I described earlier, in any ports or, or harbours close, close to you if you live on the coast. Um, or any other risk points where you think Asian Hornet uh, run a risk of coming in. Um, uh, the work of the Asian Hornet teams is very important in our contingency plan and we thank you all for, 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 for doing it and for helping us. Um, I'd also like to thank all the bee inspectors as well for all their work um, that has led to these responses so far. Uh, uh, and uh, at that point I would say thank you to all for listening. Um, bye.